Another example. This spring, shortly after the Deepwater Horizon rig went up, BP insisted that the well was only spewing 5,000 barrels of oil a day. Even when scientists were saying over and over again that there's a lot more coming out, BP stuck with those numbers, insisting that it was correct. It was about 60,000 barrels a day. It was a number that BP made up. Uh, here's another one. There's a myth out there that Priuses are less green than Hummers. And this one appeared, for example, in the Washington Post. Speaking of Hummers, perhaps it is environmentally responsible to buy one and squash a Prius with it. Well, this little one came from a report from an industry consultant. If you look behind the numbers, you see that they're more than a little fishy. These are average lifetime mileages, and these are average lifespans in years. Do you really think that the average Hummer H1 drives 379,000 miles and lasts for 34.96 years? Well, these numbers were, in my opinion, pretty much fabricated to make Hummers look good and hybrids look bad. Speaking of nonsense numbers, we now have a bunch of large factories churning out dubious numbers at an incredible rate. Anyone with a wallet can come and uh, commission a poll or a survey. Most of them are worthless. Here's about the highest quality source of survey information you can get. The Centers for Disease Control does an incredibly good job at conducting surveys. They spend a lot of time and money getting it right, and they've got the government's backing. They're well thought out, they're scientific, and often they're wrong. This one actually got a little bit of press uh, a few years ago because it talked about sex. The average man sleeps with seven women. The median number of lifetime female sexual partners for men was seven. The median number of male partners for women was four. This makes no sense. <laughs> Every time a man sleeps with a woman, a woman sleeps with a man. If you have roughly the same number of men and women, the average men and women are sleeping around the same amount. Uh, the medians technically don't have to be the same, but they should be really close. And even when it's a true average, you get the same result. Here's a French study. Uh, French women report an average of 5.1 lovers, whereas men report 12.9 lovers. <laughs> Men have more sex with women than women have sex with men. It's not possible. The thing is, people are lying. Men are bragging and women are downplaying. And it turns out that the women are downplaying a little more than the men are bragging. Uh, if you hook up people to a lie detector and ask them these questions, the gap narrows dramatically. People lie all the time in polls. The week after Katrina hit, an AP poll claimed that fully two-thirds of Americans had already given funding, had already donated uh, to Katrina relief charities. This was a lie. If that were true, given the typical do uh, donation size, Americans would have donated several billion dollars already to Katrina charities. The true number was in the order of several hundred million. It wasn't even close. You've got to remember that people like to be liked and respected, even by a random stranger, even by a pollster with a clipboard. When people answer surveys, they tend to gravitate towards answers that they think the pollster wants to hear, the answers that make them look good in the pollster's eyes. People lie to pollsters because they want to be liked. But sometimes it's the pollsters themselves who are the perpetrators of falsehoods. I'm sure you all remember this. In 2005, the nation was divided over the fate of Terry Schiavo. In a persistent vegetative state, her husband, Michael, fought uh, to get her feeding tube removed over the wishes of her, uh, her parents, her other family. The court sided with the husband, and Congress was debating whether or not to intervene. Two polls a week apart showed very different things. ABC. The majority of people, 63%, believed that Congress should butt out and 
let her die as the court ordered. Zogby, the majority of people, 79%, seem to say exactly the opposite. What happened here? Well, to find out, you have to look carefully at the questions. ABC. Shivo suffered brain damage and has been on life support for 15 years. Doctors sh say she has no consciousness and her condition is irreversible. Her husband and her parents disagree about whether she would have wanted to be kept alive. Florida courts have sided with the husband and her feeding tube was removed on Friday. What's your opinion on this case? Do you support or oppose the decision to remove Shivo's feeding tube? Do you support, oppose it strongly or somewhat? Zogby. If a disabled person is not terminally ill, not in a coma, and not being kept alive on life support, and they have no written directive, should they or should they not be denied food or water? See the difference? The Zogby poll used biased language to get the results it wanted. The choice of the word denied, for example, automatically assumes that there is a right being taken away. It's evocative, and it's leading. Who among us would say no to this question? This poll is used to manipulate us, not to inform us. Many, many polls are like this. They're not intended to tell us something new about the world. They're designed to tell you what to think, or to tell us what we want to hear in order to sell us something. It doesn't matter if people want to hear totally contradictory things. You could do that too. For example, at the end of 2006, the AP did a poll uh, to see what Americans thought the new year would bring. They wrote two stories about this poll. Americans optimistic for 2007. America's, Americans see doom gloom for 2007. Yes, these headlines are about the same poll. These polls are infinitely malleable. They're instruments that allow people to craft any message they want and sell them to you. There lies in number four. Sometimes numerical lies are a little more subtle. How many of you saw An Inconvenient Truth? Good. It was a very influential movie, and it got a lot of attention. And I thought the most striking sequence was the one where he showed movies of the landscape sinking under the waves as it was projected. This is one of those images. As you can see, the parts in red uh, are going to be gone if the waves rise by six meters. Six meters is roughly 20 feet. Now, don't get me wrong. Global warming is real, and uh, humans are responsible for a good portion of it. However, a 20-foot sea rise is an extreme example that is not in the mainstream. It's an extreme estimate. Most people think that there's only three to four uh, feet. In fact, my lecture has disappeared, but I will wing it. Uh, that it will uh, rise only three to four feet. So by choosing a 20-foot rise, Al Gore was deliberately choosing an extreme scenario that was more scary than the one that uh, he wanted, than the ones that scientists were backing. That's, this is something I call cherry-picking. Another thing that people do is what I call comparing apples and oranges. Apples and oranges happen, when well, you compare apples and oranges, two things that look similar and you're comparing them directly. Uh, they actually wind up being different underneath it all. And this is an example that came from the Blue Dog Democrats. Blue Dog Democrats are a slightly conservative group, uh, and, but they were uh, criticizing Bush for being a deficit spender. According to the Treasury Department from 1776 to 2000, the first 224 years of U.S. history, 42 U.S. presidents borrowed a combined $1.01 trillion from foreign governments and financial institutions. But in the past four years alone, the Bush administration borrowed $1.05 trillion. Does anyone see what's wrong with this? Yeah? Maybe no adjustment for inflation. You got it. There's no adjustment for inflation at all. Uh, even though the dollar sign looks like it means the same thing, the cost of goods and services changes over time. Things get more expensive. It costs $20,000 now to get a car. It cost only about $2,000 in 1970. So the value of the dollar decreases year by year. And 
if you think 1970 was cheap, think about 1900 or 1790. Uh, these dollar signs look the same, but they represent different things. And you can't compare these things directly. And that's what, precisely what the Blue Dog Democrats did. And that's deceptive. As an example, take the Louisiana Purchase. It cost $15 million. That's the cost of a fancy apartment nowadays, a uh, penthouse apartment in Manhattan. Uh, it wouldn't even be a blip on the government's radar. And as the value of the dollar got lower, spending and borrowing in raw dollar terms had to get larger and larger. Yes, Bush was quite the deficit spender, but he wasn't borrowing the equivalent of 70,000 Louisiana purchases. As you can see, proofiness can be lighthearted, it can be silly, it can be meaningless, but it could also have an effect on politics. And that effect is deeper than you might think. Proofiness is a very serious matter. It determines who runs the country. You probably remember this, the Florida recount. In 2000, the presidential election between Gore and Bush came down to a recount in Florida. More recently, in 2008, the Senate race between Al Franken and Norm Coleman came down to a recount in Minnesota. Both races were determined by proofiness. In fact, there is a right answer about what should have happened in these races, and the key is understanding that voting is error prone. You can't have a vote without a count. And even the simple act of counting has errors associated with it. You can't do it perfectly. A few years ago, a professor at MIT uh, looked at how accurately people count things, count ballots, count votes. By hand, it was about a 2% error rate. Roughly 2% of the ballots were counted wrong. A scanner, a Scantron machine, does much better. It has an error rate of half a percent. Uh, so it made mistakes one out of 200 ballots. Using data from Minnesota, I was able to derive an error rate for the ultimate in ballot counting, where people staring very hard, several people in a row, all looking very carefully, count ballots by hand as carefully as they possibly can, and still there's an error rate of about two, thousand, two hundredths of a percent. Compare that to the elections in Minnesota and Florida. In Minnesota, election morning returns have difference of two hundredths of a percent. The official returns was nine thousandths of a percent. And, the final, uh, and they, uh, as a result uh, of the closeness of this election, they fought over every single ballot, including this one where a guy wrote lizard people in for all of his votes. This particular ballot led to one of the silliest discussions in jurisprudence I have ever seen. Uh, two lawyers, four state Supreme Court justices, and Minnesota Secretary of State were, were in a heated argument. It got really nasty about whether there might be such a person as Mr. Lizard People, because that question determined whether or not Al Franken would get a vote taken away. When all was finished, when all the lizard people were counted. The final result was in favor of Al Franken with a margin of 0.01% of the vote, less than the error rate of even the most careful ballot counts. The same was true in Florida. The first count, 3 hundredths of a percent, down to 6 thousandths of a percent after a recount. And the final result was 9 thousandths of a percent. And the errors in Florida due to their bad machines was much higher than the errors in Minnesota, probably on the order of a few percent, completely dwarfing the margin of error, the margin of victory between the two candidates. What does this mean? Well, scientists know what to do in a case like this. When the quantity you want to measure is so small that your measuring instruments have errors that dwarf the measurement, that your 